Aloha and welcome to Hawaii's Volunteer Champions here on thinktechhawaii.com. I am your host, Peter Rossig, and this is a program uh, where we talk to uh, the volunteers, some of the leading volunteers here in Hawaii that make organizations happen. We want to find out why people give up their most valuable resources, which is their time and their effort, uh, to promote some cause or, or, or other. And today it's kind of a crossover show for me because uh, it, we're talking about the Hawaii Bicycling League, which I also talk about in the other program, uh, The Two Wheel Revolution. Our guests today are Patricia Johnson, uh, who is uh, the uh, vice president of the board of the Hawaii Bicycling League. And with her, we have Lauren Lee, whose official title is Director of Community Engagement for HBL, but we could call her the Volunteer Wrangler. Uh, so um, this is, uh, appreciate your being here. Start with you, Patricia. Why in the world are you volunteering for this organization? Well, um, it started all happening in uh, 2002 when um, I happened with a bunch of girlfriends. We decided we were going to go on a, on a bicycle trip to France. And I hadn't been on a bicycle since I was like uh, six. And so... Um, got a bike and uh, started riding in, in my, the town where I was in San Jose. And I found out, oh my God, this is so much fun. <laughs> it was like uh, a remembrance of childhood. And um, it, was, it was actually stunning how, how much fun it was. So did this trip, came back, and then started looking for local organizations in San Jose, the town, and uh, found out there's some great volunteer groups. And so I started riding with them. And um, I, I think I, the, the one reason I volunteer is because I just got hooked. It is so much fun. And you meet such great people. And uh, so then uh, my mom was aging here at home. And so she called and let me, I told her before, mom, if you ever need me to come, I'll come. She called and said, I need you to come home. And so in 2000, uh, December 2006, I closed everything down in San Jose and came home. And prior to that, I had checked into the Hawaii Bicycling League and, um, and had ridden the, the century rides. I'd come two years prior and ridden the century ride. And, um, and so then I, just, I thought, well, I'd check in at the office. And, and um, I had been with this volunteer organization in San Jose, and they were so organized. They had so many rides and uh, a lot of instruction. And when I came home, well, Needless to say, <laughs> the HBL at that time was pretty lacking. So um, I said, we need to get some rides here. We need to get something. Going. Well, we didn't have any insurance. We didn't have a website. So one thing just kind of snowballed and, and um, I was in deep and I was really loving it. So with my, a friend of mine named Dale Hoffman, who has since passed on, but Dale was a very well-known cyclist here in Honolulu and a really good friend and mentor for me. And uh, also then uh, I met Patty Dunn and we started a writing group called the Red Hot Ladies for women that were over 50, who wanted to just ride, just have fun, not, not compete. And uh, it just, it's kind of just grown from there. So why? Um, mainly because it's really fun and remembrance of, of the three or childhood years you meet great people. And now I've become much more uh, socially um, connected and, and embedded in terms of cycling as a, an alternative, a multimodal transportation, getting people out of cars to handle uh, some of the climate change issues that we have. So it's become much more political, but fundamentally why? Because I really love riding a bike. <laughs> Are the red hot ladies still riding? Yes, we started with was Patty Dunn and myself in uh, July of 2007. So we're on 16 years right now. And uh, our first ride, we had two women join us or four. And we now have over 296 on our list. And I think and every Sunday we have four rides, four different levels of rides for people to choose from. And I think we put on the road maybe anywhere from 30 to 50 people riding on Sunday morning. That's amazing. Have some men snuck into the Red Hot Ladies somehow? Yes. 
it's about half half and it's oh. all ages so it's oh. about half men half women and all ages yeah all right good we don't we don't allow any discrimination here on this program so uh here's the thing you just described how much you enjoy writing how much it recaptures your childhood uh so why would you want to spend time uh, working for the organization, going to those endless meetings, getting them to do the things you've described, like get a website and organize all this stuff. I mean, that's not the, is that the fun part? Um, actually, so then we, so we organized, and first then I wanted to get rides organized. So um, we started, I think I wanted to get one ride every single day of the week. Well, we did some of those and, you know, we kind of threw everything against the wall and we have, we've left now with a Monday morning ride and a Thursday morning ride. And those rides have a uh, huge ridership now. So um, the Monday morning ride is called start the week off right ride. And it's intended to have uh, something for beginners all the way to uh, more advanced. And then the Thursday ride is for intermediate to advanced riders and people go ride all the way to Kailua and back from Hono, from Kailua, Kahala. So wow. we started those rides and um, I have seen, so six, I've seen some people who started with us way back when, um, I've seen them with their families. I mean, it's, it's become like um, a family of friends and uh, we just, we watch out for each other. Sometimes you only know the person's first name and you don't, and then if they're not wearing their helmet and you run into them somewhere, you don't recognize them. <laughs> and we have to say, oh, yes, I do know you. But you only recognize them if they're wearing spandex, right? <laughs> okay, let, Lauren, let me, let me turn to you and ask you, your primary role is to uh, community engagement. And, and that really, I think, means mostly working with volunteers. And how important are volunteers to the Hawaii Bison community. So, hi, my name is Lauren. I am the Director of Community Engagement for the Hawaii Bison community. Um, we are a small 501c3 nonprofit. Um, there's about four, there's about four to five office staff, and then we also have our bike ed staff who go to all the schools to teach uh, Keiki how to ride bikes in fourth grade. Um, so when we're hosting these events, we're a small but mighty team. So we don't um, there's only a couple of us, so ho we host these big events with over 1,300 participants. Um, for example, this past September, we had our 40th annual Honolulu Century Ride, which requires about 250 plus volunteers. So um, it is extremely important to have volunteers because they help back up our events. They help make, they quite literally help make these events happen. Without them, we would not have events. Um, so. It's really important that, you know, as an organization and for other organizations as well who recognize or feel the same way that we cherish our volunteers and make sure that we don't take them for granted and truly appreciate them for what they do because we wouldn't be here today with them. Was it hard to get 250 volunteers and get them in the right place for this uh, big century ride, the four, 40th anniversary or 40th century ride that uh, HBL has put on? How difficult is it to get 250 people to, to work on something like that? Um, for the most part, it isn't too bad. It depends on what position I'm recruiting for, I think is the better way to put it. We have a, we have a lot of um, returning volunteers who always volunteer with every single one of our events. They're re as soon as I put our volunteer sign-up sheet out, they're ready to volunteer. I get so many of them immediately volunteering. Um, I also have organizations who reach out to us as well who are interested in volunteering as a group. Um, there are some cases um, where I do have to reach out to other organizations to see if maybe their group would want to, you know, help us out with an event. And then, you know, reaching out to individuals who I feel like would be good for certain lead volunteer positions. So um, it really depends on what position I'm recruiting for. If it's more like early morning at 3 a.m. for our events, it's a little bit more difficult to recruit for volunteers. But for the most part, we have such a great community that it's, I wouldn't say that, you know, it's too different. <laughs> okay, great. Give me an example of an organization that would reach out to you and say, can we volunteer? Can we help? Let's see. Um, I'd like to think of Boy Scouts. 
the Boy Scouts, yeah, Boy Scouts, a uh, key yeah. project um, over in, I believe, Kaneohe. Um, right. Let's see, yeah. where else do I have? Um, I have this, there's this one, there's these two other groups as well during the Honolulu Century Ride. Right? Um, actually, let me scratch that. I think we have like four groups who have continuously volunteered for big events such as the Honolulu Century Ride. I have the Hawaii Kai JCs and the Honolulu uh, Chinese JCs who come out and adopt aid stations, which are basically pit stops for cyclists to grab snacks, refuel, use the restrooms, get some first aid, and, or get some mechanical support. So I'm using the Honolulu Century Ride as an example for our volunteers, just because it is our biggest event and does require the most volunteers. So along this 100-mile route, we have about seven aid stations along the routes to help support cyclists during the ride. And each of these aid stations are adopted by different organizations. They quite literally adopt the aid station. Um, HPL provides all of the equipment, but these organizations provide the volunteers. Um, we have a lot of returning organizations that have helped adopt an aid station for over 10 years. Some of them, including, like I've stated before, the Honolulu uh, Chinese JCs, Hawaii Kai JCs, Hawaii Swimming Team, um, we also have Key Project and then HHF Planners, so as well as the Boy Scouts too. Um, mm -hmm. But a lot mm -hmm. of them have just started volunteering with us as group, and many of some of them has been volunteering with us for over ten years. So terrific. So Patricia, we were talking a little before, but you mentioned for many people, uh, HBL is events uh, like the like the Century Ride, like the Haleiwa Metric Century. And uh, you know some other things like that. And for other people, uh, you know, they may have heard of the education programs. Uh, first of all, in the schools, but also I just did a just learned to ride a trike in the uh, in the senior trike uh, class. Uh, what what other things are the HBL doing? How has that changed from when you first uh, signed on? I I think the main thing is is our uh, education and advocacy. So. Um, given that we're here in Honolulu and uh, representing a statewide organization. So we need, we have um, uh, Travis, our executive director, and uh, some of our key volunteers board members, John Rogers, for example, um, people who know the ins and outs or have made sure that they know the ins and outs of, of how to work with the department, State Department of Transportation, the city, um, Department of Transportation Services, and then the legislature. So um, we need to, uh, we are advocating then for things for the needs of cycling, but more, much larger than that. Actually, uh, we're on board with um, collaborating with other organizations, Sierra Club, Ulupono Initiative, um, in terms of bills and things that will make uh, our planet a more livable place. And also it will be uh, an enticement for people to be out, be active, and to get mm -hmm. out of their cars, for example, feel safer doing it. One of the things we have, um, people move to Hawaii, and they think, and they've come from a place that's been very cycling friendly, and they come here and they're very disappointed, be, especially in Honolulu. They say, I'd love to ride my bike, but I just don't feel safe on the roads. So under Mayor Caldwell, uh, there was some, some major advances uh, made in terms of, and I know I'm, I'm not popular with some people, but for us and for the community, the King Street um, uh, protected bike lane, and now we have um, we have South Street and we have a Pensacola connector, and there's more being planned. Um, so I think mostly the events, and I'll really help promote the, the commitment that we have to um, furthering the needs of people who ride bikes, but also the needs of, the, of all of our citizens to live in a healthier, safer place. Well, that's great. Uh, so you mentioned it's that HBL, Hawaii Bicycling League, is, is in fact a, a statewide uh, organization, and I know there are uh, some representatives on the other islands. And uh, right now, of course, Maui is on our minds. And uh, I know that HBL, since the, the disaster, uh, has launched a program to get bicycles for Maui. And uh, Lauren, can you tell us just a little bit about it and how we can find out more? Sure. 
Yeah, so um, HBL is currently working with community partners, including bike shops on Oahu and Maui to get bicycles to those impacted by the wildfires on Maui. Um, we are currently accepting donations to help cover the costs associated with shipping, purchasing, and distributing the bicycles, as well as taking donations of ready-to-roll bicycles and distributing them. Okay. Wow. Uh, is it successful? Are we getting bikes over to Maui? Yeah, we've had a good batch uh, donated to the bike shop, um, which, is, which is a location that is currently taking bike donations. Um, but I'd say we have a pretty good uh, amount. We were, they're already stacking up in our storage room right now. <laughs> Okay, so if I have a bicycle that I want to donate, I think I know how to donate money. I'll go to the HBL website. That's the easy part. If I have a bicycle I want to donate to make sure that it gets to Maui, what do I do? Yeah, so you're going to go to hbl.org slash bikes for Maui. It'll give you kind of the summarization of what this program is going to be for, um, as well as all of the bike shops that are currently accepting donations of ready to roll bicycles. So key is more like ready to roll bicycles is what we're looking for. Okay, and they should be in good shape. In other words, ready to roll, not something that's gonna have to go get repaired or, or whatever, right? Yeah. All right. I have, I have, Peter, I have at my house, I have people bringing bicycles to my house and then we're gonna take them over to Hawaii Bicycling League. But um, so people are really looking to see like, do I need to have these extra bikes around? No, let's get them over to Maui. Yeah. Just about every, you know, I live in a condominium and there are bicycles in our garage that have not been unlocked uh, in the 20 years I've lived here. So I know, we know there are a lot of bicycles out there that could be uh, put to better use. And I really encourage people if they have a bicycle that's in serviceable condition or take it to one of the bike shops and have them whip it into, into usable condition for, a, you know, a few bucks and then get it to, well, I, we're not gonna say go to Patricia Johnson's house, but uh, we'll say take it to the HPL office in, yeah. in Kaimuki, or I imagine some of the bike shops are accepting uh, donations and moving them along. So, you know, this is so important to help uh, people on, uh, on Maui right now. And, and a bicycle could mean the difference between somebody getting to work, getting to school and, and, and not. So uh, among the many things you could do for Maui, uh, that's one that's, uh, probably among the simpler ones. And of course, donating money would always help. So Patricia, you've been involved for a long time. You've talked about some of the changes you've seen, uh, a lot more bike infrastructure, a lot more cyclists, a lot more different kinds. I mean, now we have electric bikes, we have regular traditional bikes, uh, we have scooters, uh, we have uh, sk electric skateboards and regular old fashioned skateboards. Uh, uh, you know, how has bicycling changed uh, and all these different kinds of devices coming into the picture. Has that changed bicycling or changed the work of the HBL, I guess? Is yes, the and um, it's, it's going to be up next, I think, with legislature. And because right now, with all the new devices you just mentioned, there really isn't, um, hasn't been any legislation on that. So that's going to be up next. Um, also, we have Beaky. You know, we have the bike share program that right. Lori McCartney, uh shepherded and... Uh, it's been very successful here in Hawaii. Um, a lot by our tourists, but now is you know in Kaimuki they have it, and up in Manoa we have some bikes, so it's it's becoming much more familiar for people. But um, I think Peter, for us, it's just an educational outreach that we just have to um, get for people to understand that it's easy to ride a bike, it's safer to ride a bike. And um, we, we really need to get the message out. So this program is really helping. And also HBL, uh, with um, we have a volunteer, uh, this is under Malia, with educational classes. We have free classes for people to learn how to ride a bike, how to ride a bike safely, how to traverse in traffic safely. And those classes are free. They don't have to be a member of HBL. And um, that program is taught by all volunteers, who people who have become what we call league cycling instructors. And Malia is one of our national co uh, trainers in that program. So there's been a lot of commitment about our staff to educate themselves and to uh, be politically active. And um, we just, um, yeah, so once, 
we need the word out and then people can get back and find the true joy of getting back on their bikes. Right. Too bad we can't figure out a way to have classes for uh, people who drive uh, vehicles and uh, give, give them, how do we get, how do we do that? How do we get people who are driving, uh, not bad people, but who just are not in, in their heads aren't in the right place. Uh, how do we reach that audience, do you think? I think the main thing is we need to build it and they'll come. I mean, just like the movie, you know, we need to connect. We have a lot of bicycle infrastructure, but a lot of it's not connected. So for example, right now, from riding from Nanakuli all the way into UH, that is the South Shore bike lane, we're calling it, believe like that. And that thing gets connected, that could be a game changer. And yeah. uh, we need funding to keep those, uh, those paths uh, clean and safe. And um, so I, I, for me, it's like build it and they'll come and then also messages, messaging. And this is a Lauren is great at is social media, getting the word out. Oh. Okay, so Lauren, I'm not gonna get up at 3.30 in the morning to man a <laughs> aid station for the century ride, full, full confession here. Uh, and, and I'm a very amateur cyclist, I, I, I like to get around. What else could I do if I wanted to volunteer? I came to you right now. I said, Lauren, I really want to volunteer to support this effort. What else? What can I do? Well, we're always welcoming volunteers. Um, and sometimes I have volunteers such as Patricia, who comes in every Friday to call all of our new and renewing members. She's been doing this for, I think, quite a while now. And she comes in every Friday just to make these phone calls, which is amazing because we want to be able to welcome our new and renewing members. Oh, cool. um, we also have membership packets. We we make those in-house in the office. So if you're willing to, you know, sacrifice maybe a few paper cuts <laughs> into making these membership packets, we welcome that as well. Um, but also tabling events. HBL quite quite bicycling league also attends a lot of community tabling events um, where we're out there possibly hosting a bike rodeo, just doing a tabling to see get more people on bicycles and educating people about, you know, the cycling community. Um, if you're interested in doing any of those, like reach out to me, Lauren at hbl.org, and we can always, you know, custom fit some type of volunteer position for you. Yeah, that's great. You, you uh, from the days that Patricia described when there was no website, I think come, you've come a long way. hbl.org is a very active and very uh, lively website, and I encourage anybody that's even vaguely interested in the subject to go take a look, because if, if you ever if you've heard the expression, something there for everybody, uh, I would say that uh, pretty much anybody could find something interesting on that that website, including a lot of pictures of people in uh, in spandex. So <laughs> that that's terrific. Um, Trisha, let me ask you again uh, something a little different. If you you've talked about the changes you've seen, and some of many of them you you've actually uh, caused to happen or helped cause to happen. Uh, right now, is there something missing? Is there something in the volunteer work of HBL uh, that you you every so often think, gee, I wish we had a, or we should be doing this? Is there something in that category? Well, I, I think for the um, one of the things like Lauren Sapp there, Lauren said the staff is a mighty, mighty crew, but they're small, and so we always. First of all, funding for an advocacy position. We need another staff member that will they'll be full-time leading the advocacy charge. And then Lauren has been, one of the things she's been charged with is finding a new membership. Um, we've, ever since I've been here, since the very beginning, we have just never had a very good membership. Um, um, what do we call it, Lauren? Um, membership coordinator. Yeah, and so she's been- What do we call it? Tell me that again. A membership coordinator. Membership coordinator. So with the Hawaii Bicycling League, um, another way that you can help us out is by becoming a member of the Hawaii Bicycling League. Um, you get discounts from our events. You get discounts at some of the local bike shops. But um, we do have a couple of different plans. So you can always sign up at hbl.org. But yeah, we're definitely looking for someone to kind of take the lead with both our advocacy side of things and the Hawaii Bicycling League's um, membership side of things. So with more people riding, as I think we've all seen, with more bike lanes, with more different kinds of ways to get around on two or three or four wheels, uh, there ought to be a, a flood of people coming into HBL and saying, you know, very least take a little, take a few bucks. At very most, I want to volunteer, help make this happen. It's 
seems like the time is right for that, for HBL to move up to the next stage. And, and how do volunteers fit into that? I think volunteers also have the passion for the organization that they're helping which I think is a key factor in helping grow the organizations such as the Hawaii Vice. We have volunteers, like I, you know, I'm mentioning Patricia again, volunteers like Patricia who have been volunteering for many years and have helped drive a lot of the new adaptations to the Hawaii Vice community and helping to improve it as a whole organization itself. So um, I'm not saying you have to have the passion for the organization, organization you are um, helping out with, but it's always nice to have because it helps the organization grow its on too. I have a feeling if you had about 20 more Patricias, we'd, we'd be in much better shape. <laughs> well, I think Patricia, I think, what can you do about that? Where, how, where, how can we get to 19 more? Well, I think one piece is a lot of people have different passions for different projects, and the staff can't, you know, people will send, I think you should do this. Well, the staff should say, that's a great idea. We'd love to have it. Will you take it on? And uh, for people to be willing to for example, we would love to have a bicycle hub, you know, a place where people can come and learn how to build bikes and then we give away bikes into the community and perhaps it even turns into a business where we could strip down old bikes and, you know, there's, that's a, Salt Lake City, for example, has a fabulous model. Well, we don't have the wherewithal to do that, but it was, there was groups of people who have passions for different things, take those things on then, um, like Lauren said, then, you know, there's the passion just shows up and, and it's a varied and wide and it, it can fit all kinds of needs. That sounds great. I know Kalihi Valley, of course, has a, a very active bike uh, restoration and, and distribution program. And uh, if you're not aware of the Kapuna Shed, the uh, what used to be called the Men's Shed before it found saw the light. Uh, there's uh, Frank Smith, who is on the board, of course, I, or I think he's still on the board at HBL and used to own one of the better bike shops. It's got a, a bike restoration uh, section in there. So it, it's kind of happening, but we just need to see, I, I'm assuming we need to see more of that. Uh, there's still kids out there, I suspect, who, who don't have a, a bike or don't have a good enough bike or outgrew the one they got from uh, Christmas five years ago. So, uh, and more bikes, more bicyclists, uh, more attention from drivers, I think, is kind of, uh, you know, I'm obviously an enthusiast, so I, I'm not going to pretend to be uh, an impartial observer. So this has been great. I want to thank you both. We're coming to the end of our time. Uh, if there's anything, last words you want to give, uh, Lauren, or anything, uh, you know, how to, you've already told us how to, how to volunteer, how to give money, anything else you want to leave people with, uh, 60 seconds. Um, if you're interested in participating, whether as a volunteer or writing your events, please uh, visit um, our official website, hbl.org, um, which is our uh, organization's acronyms for Hawaii Bicycle League, so hbl.org. Um, I also just want to take the time to thank all of the organizations, the individuals, and also the local bike shops who have volunteered their times to help the Hawaii Bicycle League grow to what it is now. And we hope to continue to, you know, power through with your support as well. So um, just know that we are extremely grateful for you guys and mo mahalo nui loa. All right, that was 62 seconds, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, Patricia, you have 60 seconds. Any last words? Um, I just wanna, well, first of all, just thank our staff and our new executive director, Travis Council. So after coming out of COVID, we're now, really reinventing and we're in a strategic uh, uh, project right now, reinventing who we are and what we're up to. And uh, there's been a lot of people who are engaged in that. And um, we, we, the intention is to really grow this big time and become a part of the whole overall conversation about having Hawaii be a green, safe, um, climate sensitive, uh, sustainable culture and we're considering we want to be a part of that a big part of it and we think we have a lot to offer there so this is a moment that people this is a good moment to join up to get involved because you're about to have this growth spurt i suspect all right well thank you both very much it's been a real pleasure uh, my enthusiasm for hbl and for your work and for people like you patricia is, is boundless i really think 
uh, it's people that will make the difference. And with that, we've come to the end of another half hour of Hawaii's Volunteer Champions. We'll be back in a couple of weeks with a different volunteer and a different organization. And I hope you will join us. Also check the Two Wheel Revolution where we talk about this subject a lot more. Uh, thank you both to Lauren and to Patricia and to uh, everybody who's watching, both of you. Uh, uh, aloha and have a great day. Uh,